So we'll just give that a few minutes. So Brett and Bonnie, please go next. I'll let the, my better half no, 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 speak first. <laughs> <laughs> That's Brett. <laughs> no, uh, so Brett was a contributor and um, it was a really beautiful, we met Mary several years ago and it was just like his kismet and that he's been like in love with John Goldman's work since he was a child. It was inspired him to be a filmmaker and director himself. Yeah. And so I like to go. Yeah. I pretty much summed it up. <laughs> we also met when I was looking for someone to write a chapter on Towering Inferno. That was another part Which of the puzzle. We began writing yesterday, three years ago. So the Towering Inferno also premiered in December around a couple of days ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So both King Kong and Towering Inferno were December. I saw Kong probably opening night in you know, 76 in Michigan. But Towering Inferno, I think it was uh, in theaters like for four four months at least. So I saw it on my birthday. Right. Given that Towering Inferno came out in uh, December too, you pointed out, if you just wanted to say something about that for us. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay, so we got a big monitor here and we got the laptop over there. Um, <laughs> and, and I'll try and truncate this um, by starting backwards, a little dyslexic. First off, uh, I feel terrible that I didn't get a chance to actually reach John when I was trying to, when I was wrapping Ain't It Cold Harry Knowles, which was a show I had on PBS that celebrated film. I had all these celebrities on, and um, I think I just had an interview with Wes Craven, um, Burt Reynolds, and I, I have a, a way of naming all my hard drives after filmmakers, artists that I love, composers, and I just named one after John. I said, you know what, it's time that I reach out to this guy, because He's affected me all my life. Every year, I'll listen to um, the music of King Kong, The Blue Max, Tearing Inferno, uh, Rapture. And um, so I tried calling this house in Topanga and discovered when I left the voicemail that he had passed. So I was a day late and a dollar short and I was very, very pained by that because our show celebrated filmmakers um, and I was described by Harry Knowles as a film geek. At the time, I was like, well, what does that mean? It's kind of rude. <laughs> um, I, mean, I guess what it meant is that I was a bit of a cinephile, and in my background goes to all these films. Let me go to the beginning then. The first film I saw in a theater on my birthday, March 10th, 75, I believe, was A Towering Inferno. And... No? It was Towering Inferno, yeah. So it was a, it was a dynamic experience. Um, I liked the film. I like the buzz, I like the energy of it, but I wasn't, it wasn't my favorite of his films. That wouldn't happen until we moved to Michigan, and again in December we went and saw King Kong. And what you were talking about, uh, how he just had the camera in your face, I think that John, what I related to with John, is a very visceral, in the middle of the action kind of filmmaking. And it's in your face. <laughs> it's very, uh, you, you feel it. And when the opening notes of King Kong start, you don't see Kong, but you feel him. You hear it. You hear it in the music. And, I, and I'd, I'd like to say you kind of feel John. And I think I immediately connected to him watching this movie, nine years old, eight, eight years old. And I'm sitting apart from my family. And this is the first tragedy I've seen on, on, on camera. And yes, King Kong, the original, is the classic. But for me, his 76 version is what redefined me in, in knowing that I want to be a filmmaker. Because this guy put me right in the middle of the, of the heart of everything, in the emotion. King Kong. No! 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 Oh! And then eventually, you know, after we left there, I was making films and I became mentored by uh, Richard Franklin, who did Psycho 2 and Hitchcock. But I always, always, I got excited every time I heard about a, you know, a John film. And... The Blue Max came out of nowhere. I'm like, whoa, how did I miss this film? The Blue Max. And I went to my dad and said, hey, why don't you have the soundtrack? This is, well, you know, I was trying to pay the rent. So <laughs> I went and got it. Very first CD I ever owned. When I was going to film school, I'd listen to it. And, um, and I related to that. That's probably my favorite uh, Goldman film. Is on so many levels, you know, it is, it's not only how he executes cinematography, but the, the raw emotion of the actors. And in this case, I kind of feel like maybe he and I both kind of related to that Stockholm character. For me, I did. 
the obsession, maybe not based on what you're saying about him not having his uh, copies of films, but my obsession with filmmaking was not unlike what Stockel was like for the Blue Max. Mm -hmm. So I, I was a huge, huge fan of his work. And you know, I, I don't know, I got, I got so many notes. I mean, basically everything that I said when I wrote uh, in the book, is what I'm, I'm basically mentioning here. Can and you I, just mention one or two because we're supposed to finish at seven. So oh I my God. Okay, well, uh, well, I'll just wrap it up here. You know, it's so again, I try to reach out to mm -hmm. see if we could, we could celebrate his, his, himself and his work on the show. I just got on PBS. I'm actually just sponsored it. And then I saw this, this woman right here beside me, fell in love with her, um, moves from Austin, Six months later, we're in LA, and next thing I know, we have GPS, we can track each other, and she's in Topanga, and her phone, or she disappeared, so I, I typed the address, make sure she was okay, and it's an address to um, a government in Topanga, and I'm like, that's kind of weird. So somehow, I feel very proud that I've been able to champion him finally, which is what I wanted to do in the show, but more importantly, I wanted to let him know that he was a phenomenal filmmaker, and I, I would have loved to have had some time with him. So I feel like in a weird way I have through our, our lives crossing paths and, and I'm very, very honored. We're very honored to be um, friends with, of you. Thank you, Brad.